This is a Mustang. All right, the second we get out of town, the speed limit kicks back up again, and we can both pass the Corvette and the camper van in front of them. Whenever you're ready, go ahead. Slower, 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 slower. So fresh. Truy cập trang web của tôi. Ghé thăm Pennsylvania. Đưa xe cho tôi. Túi là một cái mũ. Túi không phải là mũ. Get over yourself. You're cowgirling a consumer product which was produced by the son of Italian immigrants to conjure erections in I was here first American boys who later in life will commit moving violations and misdemeanors in the name of sexualized patriotism. Mustangs were never Mustangs. Trevor. Gen 1s were Falcons. Gen 2s were Pintos. Gen 3s were Fairmonts and everything else Fox body. And Gen 4s were still Fox bodies, just patched more than Unreal Tournament. Now, Gen 5s or S197s were the closest thing to a one true Mustang. Besides, Trevor, do you have 50 Gs to spend on a Mach E? No, you don't. All you have is a buddy who works at M&T Bank who says he'll give you an auto loan so you can buy a used Raptor on which you will put only basic liability and then street park it. This multifunction display sucks. You see, it's nice and big because they're kind of going for the Tesla move where you have the gigantic iPad thing in the middle of the dash. The problem is Teslas are a little bit narrow. This thing's an S, uh, kind of a crossover SUV thing, so it's a little bit wider. And the, the screen is just too far away from you. And it's pointed toward the middle passenger in the back. So when you're driving and you have your phone mirrored on this, you have, you know, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto or Ford's own GPS if you're using that, you're going to be uh, with your head as you try to look at this and you can't quite get a good look at your map. It's like someone holding their, like, hey, look at this thing on my phone. And someone holds their phone up to you, but doesn't turn it all the way so you can look at it. They hold it at an angle so they can see too. So you're both looking at a phone on an angle. That. And what, what further aggravates me is you have this tiny, thin, multifunction display in front of your steering wheel to take the place of traditional gauges. But... For the life of me, I can't find in the menu where you mirror your turn-by-turn -turn directions from the main screen to the secondary screen. If I owned a Mach-E, I probably would still just use a phone mount and put my phone there. A Tesla will still beat you. Now don't get mad, this is a Mustang. You should be used to things being faster than you. What the Mach-E does better than a Tesla is feel like a luxury product. Teslas are nice but their interiors are styled like corporate liminal spaces. Minimalist, clean, and vacuous. The Mach-E feels like a Lincoln product. Thick, soft, and reassuring. Like the back pat of a rich relative you only see at Christmas time, but who is sincerely interested in your life. I feel like Ford cares about me in here even though they can't turn their phone all the way toward me so I can see the picture they took of the beggar with huge milkies. And like all electric cars, the AC game is top tier, because the car can run the compressor independently of everything else. And your passengers are going to love you, because when you walk back to your car in the middle of the hot parking lot, that interior will be nice and frigid. 
Look, I'd be lying if I said I came into this expecting anything similar to Mustangs I've driven in the past. It's a muscle car face and an SUV butt. It doesn't look like anything while simultaneously looking like a hundred other things. And it's pretty divisive, even by the modern standards of recreational outrage. There are reasonable takes about how Ford should have simply called it the Mach-E and left the Mustang name out of it altogether. And the less reasonable people out here who... <sighs> I don't know, view the Mustang's legacy, you can't see me making air quotes, but trust me, I'm making them, as being destroyed by the Mach-E's existence. And still, there are others who view legacy as a constantly evolving thing, and recognize that not all models live long enough to resemble what they were first created to be. There are also those who would argue that to enjoy driving this at all would be tantamount to betraying muscle car allegiance and taking up with the Leaf Eaters. But the Mach-E is simply the latest iteration of the generational argument about what counts as a valid thing to enjoy doing. The people who complain about a Mach-E not being a real Mustang probably complained about the Mustang 2 or the Fox Bodies or any number of Mustang variants that aren't the hand-hammered bucket of myth-making that is the first-generation model. The crowd that whines about how kids are always on their phone these days, and in my day we played outside. You know, they probably had parents who complained that kids were always playing their Nintendos instead of enjoying the great outdoors, who themselves had parents that complained about how kids are busy reading comic books or going to the picture show instead of enjoying the great outdoors. And I begin to feel like parenting is about forcing your kids to go outside and then wringing your hands in agony when they aren't back before the street lights, even though it's the only free time you get to make more kids. Mustang Mach-E, built to annoy the men doing their best Clarence Rack Joe Rogan impression, thinking they're out here slamming down hot takes like a stack of IHOP's finest. Shut your whole ass up and go back to watching Hitch for the seventh time on basic cable. What happened? You used to be cool, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Mustangs were. People just loved them before this, right? They dropped it low and made it clap thunder in these hot streets, yeah? Everyone was totally into the legacy of the Mustang, with their brows all furrowed, sitting at a computer scratching itchy, unwiped assholes with fingers covered in pizza roll grease, pounding the keys because how else is the internet gonna know Iacocca is spinning in his grave right now unless I type it out in all caps? Yeah, this is a five-door electric crossover SUV with a, a tentative excuse for wearing the pony, namely that its name derives from the Mach 1 variant of the first-gen Mustang. And it maintains continuity with other models in the Ford fleet by sharing the Global Electrified One, or GE1, platform, which itself is a remodel of the platform used on the fourth-gen Focus and Escape. But in the grand tradition of Mustangs that came before, this is actually a lot of fun to drive, so let's just cut right to the chase and address what I've done a really poor job of hiding. I love this car. I want it. And yeah, I know. Come on. Like, Mustang guy likes Mustangs. You know, video at 11. Who cares, right? But hey, I liked it better than the Tesla, which is fast, but in a way that felt conditional, as those circumstances had to align just perfectly to get the most out of it. But here I'm on gravelly roads that bristle against acceleration of any kind, and my back is pressed against the seat. It's exhilarating. My, my Mustang, I love her to death, but she never had the makings of a varsity athlete. I mean, come on. This, though? This, though? It's scary how quickly you go from a dead stop to highway speeds, the pit in your stomach expanding like a collapsing star. And I've never even been a speed guy. I know, it's antithetical to the entire notion of being a car guy. To somehow be into cars but not be into speed or going fast. But I've always been more of a handling guy. Speed has always felt like shorthand to explain to non-car people why they should like something, why a thing is cool. But the real enjoyment comes from when you feel a car's response occur almost parallel to your own body. That That's how it is for me anyway, and I'm not going to sit here or stand here and pretend it's a universal experience or that it should be. But give me a slow-moving car with great handling, and I'll likely enjoy it way more than a fast car that handles like the leash of a dog who just saw another dog. Ford Mustang Mach-E. As you or a loved one dated a liberal arts major, 
you may be entitled to financial compensation. I love Mustangs the same way I love the English language. I love English because it's not fixed, and it's that lack of fixedness that denies us the ability to master it. But the lack of fixedness is what makes it feel so alive and malleable to the trends of its era. And so it is with the Mustang, many generations of which have felt completely different to me and yet part of a fabric that smothers the inborn cynicism of 2021. Because it feels good to feel good. And the car is fun. Its job is to make you feel good, but without any of the guilt of finishing when the other person doesn't. Now, Tom purchased this at just seven miles, and it was a choice between this and an Audi S4. It only has 200 miles logged so far, 55 of which were used to get to our filming location, making this one of the youngest cars that we've ever reviewed on the channel. The motor makes 266 horsepower and 428 torque with a one-speed transmission. You can get an 88 kilowatt hour battery with a range that starts at 250 miles for the upcoming rear wheel drive extended range GT model and as high as 300 miles on the all wheel drive extended range premium. This is the premium model, but on the standard range, which comes with a 68 kilowatt hour battery. So on a single charge, the average is 211 miles for the standard premium, which is whatever. At least they'll make it up to you with features, right? Except it doesn't seem like the premium gets you much over the base model, which is named the Select. And I mean, are we selling golf putters in Newports here? Just call it the base. So real quick, you get stuff like a panoramic fixed glass roof with infrared reflective windshield, 360 degree camera, active park assist 2.0, Blue Cruise hands-free highway driving, a rotary gear shift dial, which feels more like a bug than a feature at this point, but whatever, it's standard on every model apparently. It's also a Wi-Fi hotspot so you can connect to mother technology even when your reception has fewer bars than a SoundCloud wrapper. And look, there are other features that are probably worth talking about, but really, it feels like the die was cast for this model long before anyone actually got the chance to drive it. I really do believe most people who give this car a chance would enjoy it because it's built to be nimble, comfortable, and straddling the line between the full-throated aggression of older models and the smooth, non-threatening aura of the current automotive climate. I like this car, and I don't really care if people think it's a Mustang or not because I feel like it is. People who hate electric Mustangs on principle, I mean, I'm not saying they beat you over the head with it, but I have a bit of a concussion right now. It's basically the automotive version of the no true Scotsman fallacy. No Scotsman listens to the cure. I'm not gonna do the voice. No Scotsman listens to the cure. My Uncle Thomas is a Scotsman and he listens to the cure. Ah, but no true Scotsman listens to the cure. Yeah, well, so it is here. No Mustang would have SUV curves and an electric motor. Well, the Mach-E is a Mustang with SUV curves and an electric motor. Ah, but no true Mustang has SUV curves and an electric motor. And ultimately, I guess, I don't know, you can argue this is a victim of changing circumstances, of an automaker trying to how do you do fellow kids their way into modern trends. But trends happen as a result of companies seeing which way the wind is blowing. An electric Mustang was inevitable, and while you could easily argue that it falls short of the mark of a Mustang in the design apartment, I think it holds true to the spirit of a muscle car in its performance. And maybe that's sacrilege, you know? Maybe I have to turn in my Mustang card, which I probably already had to do anyway for driving a V6 automatic, but whatever. I find function far more satisfying than form. Putting too much stock in form is like letting a kid set his own bedtime. Yeah, he'll eventually fall asleep, and then when you wake him up in the morning and he realizes he still has to face the day on basically no sleep, he might finally understand the point of bedtimes. Or he'll just have a messed up body clock forever. Either or. But, in the grand scheme of things, the adult is the one who has to make the decisions whether or not the child understands the reasons why. And look, you're not children. I'm not saying you are. You know what you like and how you like it. But I guess... I guess the point of the analogy is that maybe I don't understand why this electric Mustang looks like this. Right? But... 
at the end of the day, it doesn't matter to me. I don't need to know why they chose to make it look this way. I would rather a company make a fun car that I enjoy that embodies the general spirit of the model's lineage than to make something that adheres more closely to superficial aspects of what supposedly comprise that model's heritage. Because ultimately, cars are going to change. Not everything remains the way it originally was. At some point, no doubt stopped being placed in the ska section. One, two, three, and to the four. Ain't got the balls to put my foot into the floor. Don't need to find the truth at red line because the Roman driving Mustangs ain't a headline. But if you really want to mock me, Lockheed couldn't catch up with the Mach E. That's a whole ass lie, it isn't likely. But it's pointless to judge on what it might be. Feel I'm floating by like waterbed sex dating an FBI agent calling my Fed X. Cancel every song I wrote, get me the red X. Come correct on the CD that's up ahead next.